Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. The Bible records some, some I think you, we shall be very fast in opening the scriptures so that uh, you can also be able to help me to read them because we are, we are in a very serious learning to understand something that you have or something that you, you want to understand what you have. Hallelujah. So I want to begin from the book of 2 Timothy before I invent the topic. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are learning about soteria. Soteria. And I say, when I talk, I talk about soteria, I'm talking about what? Deliverance. I'm talking about what? Salvation. Christ in Jesus. So we are learning about salvation. So in Greek, salvation, it, sorry, in Greek, it is the word soteria. And I want to go chronologically so that we can understand some of the things that will help us as we continue with this particular learning in the name of our Lord Jesus. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, it says, And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation, through which is in Christ Jesus. So he's telling us that we have known the scriptures which are able to make us wise unto salvation, to make us wise for salvation. Hallelujah. So then when we read the scriptures in a proper way, then the scriptures will give you the understanding, the knowledge, and the wisdom that will give you what we call salvation in Christ Jesus. Because salvation is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's why it says through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are talking about salvation. Now in Greek, salvation, sorry, in Greek it is the word soteria. S-O-T-E-R-I-A. Soteria. And then the learning of it becomes soteriology because I had indicated this earlier in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is soteria? Soteria simply means it has Compound words. It has words, many words collectively meaning the same thing. Hallelujah. Number one, soteria means salvation, to save. Number two, it means deliverance, to deliver. Number three, it means rescue, to rescue. Hallelujah. It also means liberate, redeem, ransom. Ransom is R A N S O M, ransom. Hallelujah. So when we, we get to understand all these words, then you will be able to understand what is salvation. Because it's unfortunate. Juzi, we have been learning about confession. Hallelujah. And we understood what First John chapter 1, verse 9 explains when we say when he says that if we confess our sins, comma, he is faithful to do what? And just to do what? Hallelujah. So we understood what it means when it says that if we confess our sins. Because we never understood that verse as it is. So now when it comes to salvation, now we are talking about soteria. I say it means it has very many words, but all those words mean the same thing. Hallelujah. It's just like the name pastor. When you read your New Testament Bible, you'll find a pastor, there's a place, he uses the name shepherd, pastor, bishop, elder, hallelujah. All these names refer to overseer, all, the, all those names refer to pastor. But they are now denoting the office and the function. So that is one thing we, have, we need to understand. So soteria means salvation, deliverance, rescue, hallelujah, liberate or liberation, ransom, I we shall understand what is ransom. And then it also means safety. What did we learn about last Sunday? We were learning about joy. Hallelujah. Safety. And then finally, preserve. Preserve. To preserve. So it means to rescue. Ransom. Preserve. Hallelujah. Safety. Serve or salvation. Deliverance. So in this learning, we are going to, to, to do 
to show the difference between deliverance and casting out of demons. Because that is where we are seeing a lot of confusion in churches today. Hallelujah. And that's why somebody can, can tell you, you know, Brother Abel is born again, but is not delivered. Have you ever heard even pastors saying those things? You know, you are, you are saved, but you need deliverance. That you know, after being saved, now you need deliverance. No! Deliverance is salvation. Praise King Jesus. Amen. To be delivered is to be saved. Hallelujah. So there is nothing somebody should tell you, Yakwamba, <laughs> you know you are saved, but you are not delivered. That is an ignorance of the highest level that can be coming out of your mouth. It is like you are stripping off your, your clothes before your children. Hallelujah. So ignorance is not, it's not good. I'm here that ignorance is not good. Hallelujah. So salvation, salvation, deliverance. So deliverance, salvation is one thing. Deliverance and salvation is one thing. Hallelujah. So I, I also want to see, because that is like a noun. So, 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 terrier. Salvation, deliverance, safety, preservation. Hallelujah. Have you ever preserved? It can stay in the house one year. 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 Preservation to preserve. You have uh, taken care of something completely to an extent that it is preserved for longevity. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is what soteria means. So that is where we find salvation. So there is also what a, a savior, which comes from the word salvation, deliverer, which comes from the word deliverance, and then rescuer, which comes from the word rescue, and then preserver, which comes from the word. And then redeemer, which comes from the word redemption. Hallelujah. Because it's also it also it also means redemption. Redeem. Redeeming is another word for deliverance. Deliverance is another word for salvation. Salvation is another word for ransom. Ransom is another word for safety. All those is just one. But this is present. So now there is another one, sotiras. 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 S-O-T-I-R-A-S. Sotiras. Now, so that means savior, rescuer, redeemer, preserver. Hallelujah. So tiras, savior, deliverer, rescuer, preserver, redeemer, all that. And then there is a word, hamatia. Hamatia is H A R, hamatia, H A R M A T I A. There is a reason to give you this foundation that it may help you to help others. Hallelujah. So that you don't, I said hamatia is H A R M A T I A, hamatia, which means sin. That is a Greek word for sin. It means sin. Hallelujah. So, what is sin? Because you will also see people fooling around with the word. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Have you heard many people doing that? All have sinned and they have fallen short of God's glory. So we are on that journey to understand what is salvation and how a believer will not misquote the scriptures. Hallelujah. So it is hamatia, which means a sin. So what is hamatia or what is sin? The fall. Hallelujah. It simply means falling short, falling short, missing a mark. Hallelujah. Yes. When you hear somebody saying you miss a mark, it means you are a sinner. Hallelujah. Falling short. I, I, we shall explain more as we continue even to learn this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, number one, I want us to read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 16, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 16. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you there? You know, you are my Bible reader, so the more you read, the more you, you grow in the knowledge. So you will be very fast in opening the Bible. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. You can read. Uh, very loud in Jesus' name, because the louder you read, the powerful it is. The father shall not be put to death, 
the fathers shall not be put to death. For the, the fathers shall not be put to death for the children, nor shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Now, here, there is, we are, this is still the law. Hallelujah. And in the law, the law is disqualifying that no man can die for the sin of another man. Hallelujah. He says, not even the father shall die for the sins of the son, nor the son die for the sins of the and then let me ask you, this is, we are still in the shadows. Because when we talk about Deuteronomy uh, chapter, uh, the one we have read, Deuteronomy 24 verse 16, we are talking about the shadows. So we, we are still in the shadows where Christ is not revealed. And yet in the shadows, we are seeing a communication that the father shall not die for the sins of the son, nor the son die for the sins of the, of the father. Then where, where did you find this, this doctrine of generational curses? Because he's saying this is the fifth book of Torah, the fifth book of the Mosaic laws. Equally, because from, from Deuteronomy, which other book are we going to next? Joshua. Hallelujah. So now, meaning that the communication that we see in the book of in the book of uh, uh, Genesis, uh, uh, in the book of uh, Exodus, especially Exodus, uh, you come Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, all the way to Kuyo Sasa Katika Deuteronomy, you realize that he's saying no. So you, you hear uh, somewhere in Jeremiah and Odea Katika the book of Ezekiel, and Asema Kwamba, uh, yes, Kule Kitambo Kulikuwa na Prova from Bible, and Asema Kwamba, Wazazu wa Nikula Mizabibu, Lakini Menwe wa Tome Gafanini, Ika Kufa Gandhi. So the, this Prova, the day is coming when it will no longer be used, meaning there is somebody who will come to remove it. Hallelujah. So that Akuna mtu atasema Abel ako maskini ama anaishi katika njia anaishi kwa sababu ya damu ya ukoo. Are you getting me? Kwa sababu ya baba alikuwa mganga, kwa sababu ya babu alikuwa mchawi. So kwa sababu ya hiyo imeinherit Abel. So Abel anafaa kutoka katika damu ya ukoo. No. So he says a father shall not read it again please. The father shall not be put to death for the children, nor shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Every man shall be put to death, to death for his own sin. So no person shall stand in the gap for another because of sin. Hallelujah. So you need to understand this very carefully in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we read Psalms? Can we read Psalms? Chapter 49. Psalms 49, verse 7 to 9. Psalms 49, verse 7 to 9. Psalms 49, 7 to 9. Truly, no man can ransom himself. No man can ransom himself. No man can die even for himself. Uh -huh. Or give to God the price of his life. Or give to God the price of his life. For the ransom of his life is costly and can never and can never so what what is he saying this listen to this very carefully Re, come come again come again truly no man can ransom in fact it begins with the word truly there's no doubt that no man can can ransom to ransom can save can deliver even himself live alone live, delivering another person just delivering himself no man eh? Or give to God the price of his life. Or give to God the price of his life. For the ransom of his, for the for the ransom of his life is costly, and mm -hmm. can never suffice. And can never. Mm -hmm. We are like Can never suffice. That is, that is S U double F. F. Yes, that is just like that. Hallelujah. So he's talking about the ransom, and, and we are going to reveal more uh, as we continue to learn about this. So I want us to go to the New Testament and read First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse three, because this we have read from the Olden Covenant that no man can ransom, no man can deliver himself, no man. 
no man eh? first corinthians 15 3. first corinthians 15 verse 3 for i delivered to you as of first importance what i also received that christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures uh -huh. read it again for i delivered to you as of first importance what i also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. Uh, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. What is this? Hallelujah. <coughs> Listen to this. That is now 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. According to what we have read from the book of Exodus and what we have read also from the book of Deuteronomy, what we have read from the book of Deuteronomy and Exodus, no man can deliver himself and no man can deliver another. Is it true? No man can deliver himself, no man can deliver another man. No man shall die for the sins of another one. Is it true? But now in 1 Corinthians it says, Christ died for our... So I want us to see, is it true or does the Bible complicate itself? I want us to read a second Chronicles 25 verse 4 in the name of our Lord Jesus so that as we build this foundation we may be able to understand what is deliverance what is salvation hallelujah because it is soteria rescue preserve second Chronicles chapter 25 verse 4 Verse 4. Yes. But he did not put their children to death according to what is written in the law, in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded the father shall not shall not be put to death for the children, or the children to be put to death for the fathers, but every man shall die for his, for his own sin. Now, this is a repeat. So we are now outside there. The, 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 the Torah, the five books, right? So to Mengia, though Genesis is not one of them, Genesis is a New Testament concealed. It, I think we, we have said that sometimes back. Hallelujah. So he's repeating to explain now in the Chronicles. And the Chronicle, what is it? Mamba and Akat, isn't it? That no man, nobody shall die, no human being shall die for the sin of another. No human being. So the Lord is qualified any man to die for the sins of another man. What is that present? Then if the law is disqualifying that no man can die for the sins of another man, and yet salvation means deliverance, then who will deliver man? Hallelujah. And then we have seen that there is something called hamatia, which means sin, which means what? Falling short of. I will explain what is sin. We are defined. We shall explain what is sin so that you can understand why a man was disqualified from dying for another man. Praise King Jesus. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So listen to this. Mark chapter 10 verse 45 as we continue to build foundation. Mark chapter 10 verse 5 in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mariko Kumi 45. Mark 10. 45. For the Son of Man also came not to be served. For the Son of, of man. man came not to be served. So who is the Son of Man? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus Christ. But we understand that the law has disqualified that no man can die for the sins of another man. So we want to see then how we how can Jesus be called a son of man and yet he's qualified to do the, the work according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where we read? Uh -huh. For the son of man also came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So who gives life? It will be a stupid reasoning if a Christian can stand and say I gave my life to Jesus. So he came to do what? He, he came to do what? To give life as what? Ransom. So where there is giving life, the purpose of giving life is ransom. Hallelujah. Because ransom means deliverance. So no man can deliver you. I cannot deliver you. 
No, nobody should. It is the Son of Man who came, and the purpose of coming was to give. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. We say sin in 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 in, in Greek is called hamatia, which means falling short of glory. Hallelujah. So falling short means that you are no longer having the power, the authority, the position to save yourself. That is the meaning of sin. Falling short of disqualified. Hallelujah. That is what sin means. Disqualified. Hamatia. Fallen short of. So when the Bible says in Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of, that is how it is, how it was interpreted from the Greek. But the word sinned already means fallen short of. Are we together? And by virtue or, or by, by the vice of falling short of, now no man qualifies to give life because he has no life to give. So that's why now we need Jesus to come and then he gives his life as what? As a deliverance, as a salvation, as a ransom. Are, are we together? Are we learning somebody? Praising Jesus. Amen. Now listen to this because Baruch 9 9 9 9 9 9 Now when you read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 as you open in the name of Lord Jesus. Now he says, since, now we want to see how he becomes man. He says, since the children, meaning, listen to this, since the children have flesh and blood. Since these people are human beings and they are disqualified from doing a deliverance for themselves because they lost life. Ephesians 2 verse 1 to 2 says, we were dead where? So anybody who is dead in sin is short of. Hallelujah. I want you to ushike imabati. It means you are short of ability, right? You are short of reaching there. So that inability is what we call sin. Are we together? That inability is what we call sin. So man was unable, meaning that he had lost the, any, the only thing that he received from God. And so he remains short of. So that short of is what we call hamatia, meaning what? Sin. Praise King Jesus. Now read. Since therefore the children share in since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same nature, that through death he might destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil. That is the devil. So since men who are disqualified have flesh and blood, he became he became like them. He took their nature, meaning what? He was not human being. He only became human being listen to this since children have flesh and blood he also became he took their body he took their humanity hallelujah if if adam did not fall there would be no, nothing called the, the the trinity there is no one trinity in the bible i know people are wondering hallelujah there is no one trinity in the Bible. Start reading your Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Even if you will finish two years to come or 20 years to come, you will struggle. You will not find the word, the word trinity in the Bible. Hallelujah. Because in the Bible, can somebody read for me Deuteronomy chapter 6? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. I want to show you something there. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. And this one is helping us to build the understanding of the scriptures. What does God say? Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is, is one Lord. The Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 5. And you shall love the no, Lord. No, I just wanted to verse, only verse 4. Hear this. The Lord your God is one Lord. Is one Lord. Hallelujah. So, you need to understand why are we seeing something in the name Trinity? Hallelujah. The fall of man is the introduction of what? Trinity. I want to explain this because we are learning about a very critical. The whole of this Bible is based on one message, salvation. So, you need to understand this very powerfully. Very powerfully. Listen to this. The Lord your God is one. Hallelujah. So, when Adam has not eaten, when Adam has not sinned, 
When Adam has not gone against what he received from God, the instructions, the preaching, hallelujah, God is one. So at what point are we seeing God in, three from, in, in Trinity when man falls? Because when man falls, that is when God reduced himself, hallelujah, to become man. It is called incarnation. So when he becomes man, now he's called the son. Hallelujah. He's called the son because God cannot die. Is it true? God cannot die. And already we have seen from the book of Deuteronomy, we have seen from the book of Chronicles, we have seen from the book of uh, uh, Psalms 49, that no man can die to deliver another man. Hallelujah. So, the reason why God becomes a son is that God becomes a son. He reduces to become a son. And that's why he's calling himself in the book of Mark that the son of man. So he reduces himself to become the son of man so that now only a son can die. But God cannot die. So he becomes the son so that he can die to deliver man. Are we together? He reduces. He becomes the son because only the son can die. And now after the son dying, hallelujah, after he has delivered man, this son will go and then take the form of the spirit because only the spirit can feed in man. Are we together? Only the spirit can live in, in man. But God by himself, he, no, he could, nobody could accommodate him. So he comes and then he becomes, and that's why you see, uh, 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 David says, the Lord, he saw that vision, he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit on the throne. Who is the, the Lord saying to my Lord? Because God came out of God. And then when God comes out of God, hallelujah, he becomes son. Are you getting me this? And then when he becomes son, he dies to deliver you because there is no human being qualified to die. And then after God has died, God becomes what? Spirit. So that now he can live where? In the man he has saved. Praise King Jesus. When you read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, he says, For it is by grace that you are saved, and this is the gift of God. So salvation is the gift of God. It is not your own gift. When we read from the book of yesterday, when we read from the book of uh, uh, Psalms 51, verse 12, David was telling God what? God, restore to me the joy of, of your salvation. Because salvation, deliverance, is of God. So he says, of you as not my salvation. Because it is his salvation, and then his salvation has been deposited in us by the means of his death. Are we together, somebody? Hallelujah. Now you understand why we have the Trinity. The Trinity is there because of the, the falling of man, Hamatia. So that now, man can, it's a formula to bring back man. Hallelujah. To bring back, it is a formula to bring back man. That's why John chapter 3, verse 16, it says what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. That he was given, meaning he gave himself. Praise King Jesus. Isaiah saw it and he said to us, a child is born, a son is given. A son is not born, a son is given. So he becomes man so that he can now do what the law could not do. No man can save himself. Imagine, even you, your son cannot die for you. And you cannot even die for your wife, Susan. Hallelujah. So you cannot redeem yourself. So when you see a judge saying, today we have delivered service, that is a stupid, stupid religious people who do not understand what is deliverance. Hallelujah. Praise King Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, are you angry because I'm calling them stupid? <laughs> Amen. So I want us to read uh, Exodus chapter 6. So that now we go uh, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. What is deliverance? What is salvation? Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 6, verse 6. You can go to 6, verse 8. Read. Verse 6. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. That word, I will bring you out. I will deliver you. 
I will deliver you. Then I'm not going to go. In James Russia, I'm not going to go. I will deliver you. Eh? Continue. But I will bring you out, meaning liberate, redeem, deliver. Uh-huh. Say therefore to the people of Israel, mm-hmm. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And I will bring you So out. number one, he identifies himself as the Lord, so that you may know it is only the Lord who can bring you out. It's only the Lord who can do what? Who can deliver. So I am the Lord. And that's why, because of being the Lord, through my Lordship, I will bring you out. I will deliver you. Uh-huh. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, uh-huh. and I will deliver you from their bondage. And I will deliver you. Now it brings it better. And I will deliver you from their bondage. bondage. Uh-huh. And I will redeem you. And I will redeem you. So he he's, he's applying the same one in another style. Redeem, deliver, rescue, preserve, re, 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 ransom. All those who are liberate, all those who are about to myself. And I will, you see, I will deliver you and I will redeem you. Uh-huh. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. With an outstretched arm. Listen to this. What is the outstretched arm? When you do this, you, have, uh, uh, you may stretch your arms. Hallelujah. So this is a typology how he will stretch the hands on the cross. Are you getting it? But he's giving us the understanding there with an outstretched hand, arm, arm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Keep on reading to verse 8. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm uh-huh. and with great acts of judgment. Good. To verse 8, right? So that is deliverance. So what is deliverance? Listen to this. You are going to understand more. The, don't be foolish before people to say we have deliverance service. The whole Bible, there's nothing like deliverance service. Hallelujah. There is nothing like prayer of deliverance. Are you getting it? Don't worry, we are still reading. Hallelujah. Don't worry, we are still here in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, that is what God is saying. I will deliver you. I will deliver you. Isaiah, now we want to go to Isaiah chapter 6. 61, sorry. Verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I, I know many of us know this. Can we read? Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me uh-huh. because the Lord has anointed me uh-huh. to bring good tidings to the afflicted. Uh-huh. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. To proclaim liberty, to proclaim deliverance. So, Deliverance is what? Is a proclamation. It's not a service. It's a preaching. That's what, let me use the better word. It's a preaching. To preach. What to preach? Liberty. Did I give you liberty? Did I give you redemption? Did I give you deliverance, salvation? All of them are called sojourner because it's one one, meaning salvation. Hallelujah. To preach, so what he's saying there is to proclaim salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Read it again. To, to, to proclaim? To proclaim liberty to the captive. <clears throat> to the captive. So they are in captivity. Hallelujah. When you are shooting the video, don't read the Bible. Because I am moving. You cannot condemn them. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. You will get. not score from here. So, to proclaim liberty to those who are where? In captivity. So, kuna watu tumefungwa. Tumefungwa wapi? In the, we are short of the glory. Meaning we are in captivity. We, are lose, we have lost the power and the prowess to help ourselves. So, he has come to proclaim liberty. So that we, that proclamation is deliverance. Hallelujah. How is it deliverance? Because when I'm set free from the liberty... Now I'm delivered from captivity. That is what deliverance, salvation. Uh-huh. And the opening of prison. And the opening of prison. To those who are hell. bound. <laughs> to those who are bound. Who are bound? Who fungo? What are fungo? So you need to deliver them. Si mtu akifungo ata ijele kawaida. Si kuda kimi na ito bond. Muki na enda muna lipa yeye do ransom zaza dunyani ni typology. Muna lipa and then yeye na parin. Uh-huh. To proclaim year of the Lord's favor 
to declare the year of the Lord's favor. That's why we are called Christ's favor. <laughs> and the day of vengeance of, of And the God. day of vengeance of our Lord. Now listen to this. You will find preachers preaching. Now when I pick up the vengeance of the Lord. And then they say, you know what? God, Jesus came to declare the day of vengeance. The day of vengeance, when you read Deuteronomy right there, Deuteronomy 32 verse 35, God says, it is, vengeance is for me, don't pay it. Hallelujah. Vengeance is for me, don't pay it. It is me to pay vengeance. Are we together? Does he say so? Yeah. <laughs> vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. And, recom and recompense. Recompense not. Uh -huh. <laughs> and recom a recompense for the time when their food shall sleep. Hallelujah. You see? So he says, vengeance is mine. And here he says, also to bring the vengeance of God. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you go to Romans 12, Romans 12, verse 18, 19. Romans 12, verse 18, 19. Read. If possible, so far as it is, as it depends upon you, live peacefully. Romans 12. 12. If possible, so far as Romans 12, verse 18. 18. Start verse 19. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Now, listen to this. Never avenge yourselves. But leave it to the wrath of God. Uh -huh. To the wrath, wrath of God. Uh -huh. For it is written. For it is written. Where is it written? Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 35 where we have just read. It is written. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. I will repay, says the Lord. So it says, vengeance is mine. And where is it written? Vengeance is God's. Deuteronomy 32 verse, that five he says, do not pay vengeance, for vengeance is mine, I will pay. And then, here he is confirming, don't pay vengeance, vengeance is mine. And now in Isaiah he is prophesying to proclaim and to bring the vengeance of the Lord. Listen, vengeance of the Lord. Next verse, after vengeance, who may finger? Vengeance, Romans 12. Verse 20. Uh -huh, verse 20 listen to that. No, if your enemy is hungry, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. That is God's vengeance. If uh -huh. he is thirsty, if he is thirsty, give him drink. That is God's vengeance. For by so doing, for by so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Well, that's for you, but you That is God's vengeance. Why? When there's a funny bad yako. So vengeance in Isaiah, the first word, salvation. So when you see the word, and then on honor, hey, hey, chuki, on honor, no, salvation. That my vengeance is salvation. My wrath is salvation. Hallelujah. Yani, mkiwa waka mkosea kwa nyumba vizuri sana, badalo mkikuwe banga umpige, baaki unenda kwa supermarket, unakuja na budget ya 20,000. Unampiga na mapenzi kabisa. Na mambi mnikosea sana. Na kwa sababu mnikosea, Ni mama kufanya baje ya 20,000 kuku discipline ili zoe na hiyo. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is salvation. So that is the vengeance. So when he says go back to Isaiah, hapo mahali pa vengeance. So now you can understand what vengeance is because God has said, vengeance is my don't pay. Now if you want to pay, this is my vengeance. Ukionana okay, adui yako, wangapi wanaonana na adui alafu Are we Salamiana? Hallelujah. It's not born again. He does not understand what vengeance is, what salvation is. So now we are understanding what salvation is. How <laughs> about proclaiming that? To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Verse 3. To declare the vengeance. How about vengeance? To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And the day of vengeance of and the God. day of vengeance of the Lord. So the day of vengeance of the Lord is the day of salvation. That's why I get and the day of salvation is now. Hey, you know, there's a day of vengeance is coming. There's a day of vengeance is coming, brothers. So we need to repent. No. You need to start to understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. Good. So now we have understood that. So we want to see when Jesus is also quoting this verse. Can we go to the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 17 and 18? Luke, chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. In Jesus' name. 
Because today, I'm dealing with deliverance. <laughs> Luke 4, 7 to 18. 18. And there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. He has entered the temple and then is given the book of Isaiah. And then he opens Isaiah 61 verse 1. <laughs> he opened the book and found the place where it was written. Uh -huh. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Uh -huh. He has sent me to proclaim. To the poor because they are short of. Hallelujah. They are short of not material wealth. But they are short of, so they were all poor. We were all poor before Christ. So, uh -huh, we cannot help ourselves. That's why they were poor. Uh -huh. <coughs> Keep on reading. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. To proclaim? Release. Release. Deliverance. Yani, uliko meshikwa. Now you are released, set free. Hallelujah. To do what? To, to proclaim. Release. To proclaim what? Release. Uh, so it is a deliverance, is a preaching. Hallelujah. Faith comes by and hearing what? So salvation is a preaching. We don't have to pick you out of my coffin and be boko, you are coke. We do a preaching. And then we don't deliver them. We only, what we do, we preach deliverance. And the deliverer whom we preach delivers them. Amen. Are we together? Amen. Keep on reading. To proclaim the release from there. To proclaim release to the captives mm -hmm. and recovering of sight. Who are captives? Sinners. Uh -huh. And recovering of sight to the blind. Mm -hmm. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To set liberty, deliverance to those who are in bondages of sin. Uh -huh. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To, uh, to proclaim the acceptable years of, year of the Lord. Now listen to this, you are, if you are very carefully. Hallelujah. Did Jesus amend the reading? Because we give need to proclaim the day of Lord's vengeance. Who we give need to declare the acceptable salvation? Why should he need? Are you getting it now? Hallelujah. It's not that he brought another. No. Hallelujah. He, he brings it clear. Now, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. Next verse, when you read, he says, And he closed the book. He closed the book. And gave it back to the attendant. And he gave it back. And he said, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled. Hallelujah. And we don't see him. We don't see him paying vengeance. But now it's acceptable here of the Lord. That's why the day of salvation is now. Because that is the time of acceptable. What is salvation? When I accept Jesus Christ, the Lordship of Jesus, it is a, salvation is accepting what? Jesus Christ. That's why he says the acceptable here of the Lord. But in Isaiah, it is the day of vengeance. That's when the one people saw my mother, Mungu ni wawifu. And I'm going to tell you, I said, Mungu ni wawifu. See you in to understand here, no, no, we've been a match in. Because we are dealing with Greek. I know what I'm doing, that you may understand these things. Hallelujah. Acceptable here or? Hallelujah. Colossians 1, 12 and 13. We're called aside. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Colossians 1, 12, yes. yeah. Giving thanks to the Father. Giving thanks to the Father. We are giving thanks to the Father. Uh -huh. Who has qualified us. Who has qualified us because before he qualifies us, we were short. Short of. Short of the glory. I cannot reach here. I am short of. So I'm disqualified. What disqualifies you or what disqualified us at that time? Sin. Amatia, Amatia. So short. So he has he has qualified us. Uh -huh. Giving giving thanks to the Father uh -huh. who has qualified us mm -hmm. to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In light. He has delivered us. Oh, he has. So no, listen to this. He will deliver us 
He will deliver us. He has delivered us. So who has delivered you? Hallelujah. And there are people who still read that verse and say, so it is time God wants to deliver people. He says he has already. When, whatever he did on the cross, when he said it is finished, that was the perfection of salvation. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise King Jesus. Amen. He has. You know, sometimes, understand English, man. He has he has given thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. The deliverance. He has delivered from the from the creed, from the darkness. from darkness, delivered us. So it is darkness. Delivers us from darkness to. And transferred us to the kingdom of God. So deliverance a movement. Are you getting now? From one kingdom of darkness to into another. That is deliverance. So when I pray for somebody, and then we declare, we cast out demons. That is not deliverance. Hallelujah. That is not deliverance. That is not deliverance. So deliverance is a preaching, number one. Number two, deliverance is what? A movement. That's why Israelites, when we read from Exodus, they, it was a movement from the land of bondage, slavery, into the land of freedom, the promised land. Which land? Canaan. So it was a movement. I get it. It's a movement. Praise the Lord. Hey, you know, I'm a Muslim, but because I'm sick, I want you to pray for me, and then I will be healed. Jesus healed even sinners, and they were never born again. Even none of them never came back to say thank you. They were not born again. Hallelujah. And, and God, He will heal even those who are not born again. Our God is not passion. He heals everybody. That healing is not deliverance. Are you getting me? So there's nothing like today we have delivered service. No. The preaching, when I preach, I'm preaching deliverance. So we preach. So it is a preaching. And then that preaching will provoke Christ to move you when you accept him. He moves you from this kingdom into this kingdom. That is deliverance. One is special. And there are no three, four deliverers, only one deliverer. That my father makes so many. I am the Lord. I am the only deliverer. And I want us also to read Isaiah 43. So that I give you more in Jesus' name. Isaiah 43, verse 11. Isaiah 43, verse 11. Isaiah 43, 11. I, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And besides me, and besides me, there is no savior. There is no deliverer. It is only me who delivers. Amen. Somebody, are you, is, is it sinking? Yes. Hallelujah. Number one, I, I must make myself known. I am the Lord. And besides me, there is no savior. There is no sotiras. There is no deliverer. There is no rescuer. It is only me. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is only me. This is so powerful. I am the Lord. Apart from, the, apart from me, there is no deliverer. Colossians, he redeemed us. Let us finalize with Acts chapter 13, verse 38. Acts 13, 38. Let nobody come with the, with, with the things unatanganyo to apavitu to end up for your deliverance. Nothing like that, my friends. No man delivers 
Acts 13, 38. Let it be known to you. Let it be known to you even right now. Let it be known to you. Then. Even you is watching me. Let it be known to you. Let it be known to you, therefore, brethren, that through this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through this man, Jesus Christ, forgiveness of sin is proclaimed. Meaning that forgiveness of sin is preached. That word forgiveness, hallelujah, it is translated, katika original yake ni deliverance is preached to you. So deliverance, when I'm being shifted, I cannot be shifted or moved from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God if I'm not forgiven. That's why the forgiveness is being preached. So deliverance is movement. Deliverance is preaching. Are we together? And the deliverer is who? He says when it comes to deliver, there are no two, three people who can deliver, who can do deliverance. Myself. Hallelujah. I am the Lord. When it comes to that, you can, you can preach me. You can preach and do preaching and teach people about me, but you cannot deliver them. When it comes to deliver, it is me. Because the way to deliver is the way on the cross. Hallelujah. No man can die for another man. So if I say I want to deliver you, Mukuje na banga, mukuje na mijaledi, hallelujah, I will teach about the cross. Mukuje na banga, mukuje na mijaledi, na ukwe ukwe strong kuskei ujumbe, because ukwe strong kuskei ujumbe. So munga kuchengu kuskei ujumbe after the cross. Ukuje, and then you must be ready to be crucified. But what about other people? Like I said, I'm crucifying me. When you crucify upside down, the scope of Kama Yesu. Because I want to identify if for Yesu Pekake, you require to deliver man. Nobody else can die that death. Hallelujah. So I want to show you now that is deliverance. I want to show you now what people call deliverance by mistake or by ignorance. When I cast out demons, sorry, when I pray for people and demons come out, it is not deliverance. Hallelujah. We have realized deliverance is salvation. And salvation is a shift. They shifted from bondage into the promised land. Deliverance. Hallelujah. They moved. It's also a preaching. He preached to them God. And they believed in Wakanda Safari. And some of them along the way, they failed to believe. And some of them died because of disbelief. Meaning all of this was a preaching. He was preaching to them God. But then you might I hope when anything special you put in the promised land. What are the same? You are. You know, Moses, because of anger, he did not enter the promised land. There was nothing special in the in, 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 in the promised land. There was nothing special. Between Israel and Jesus, who is important? Who is important? Now, can you answer me? Between Jesus and, 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 and the promised land, who is important? It is Jesus. No. Because even if Jesus was to, to, to live in Kiganjo, then I don't need heaven. I've been Kiganjo with Jesus. Hallelujah. So between them who went to the promised land and Jesus and Moses who saw Jesus, who is powerful than who? Because Moses existed until the New Testament. Because we are seeing Elijah and Moses, Matthew 17, Elijah and Moses talking and conversing and all of them in glory. That's why we saw my Hebrews in Asama Kwamba. He let Penye when he was Fikisha, Penye Joshua and Wafikisha. It was not the real rest. It was not the rest. Because the rest is Christ. All of those were typologies. Like in Yuko, there was nothing special. They were typologies. So, Ukienda na Kiria Kwamba and Enda Mahalias or Zaniwa, Utashindo, I had a company. There was nothing special. I'm telling you, and we shall learn. Praise King Jesus. So why why did not why is it that Moses never went there? Because 
There was nothing special there. <laughs> ah, when you read Deuteronomy 32, hallelujah, Moses is telling God, no, Exodus 32, Moses is telling God, Mungu, blot my name from your book of life. Remove my name from that book. Mungu akamambia siwezi, awa ni sumbua. Siwezi toa jina lao kwa kitabu cha uzima. Hicho kitabu cha uzima ni nani? Yesu Kristo. Kama huko kulikuwa kitu special na alikuwa kwa kitabu cha uzima na Mungu amekataa mithibitisha siwezi kutoa. Mbona kufika kama huko kulikuwa maana kitabu cha uzima? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise King Jesus. So you need to understand. And that's why I told you we are still learning na tutapata because it's on this topic. Imagine you only have power to, to, to accept Jesus to be saved. But you cannot remove yourself from Christ. So if you to attend, mutua mutua kwa makoka he lost he lost salvation he and backslide. How kwa makoka kwa kiumbo mimi? Because you are born again, how can you say you backslid? You then you gave your life to Jesus. But if it is Jesus who gave you His life, we are to masoma. You cannot remove it. Na na to masoma na na ni topic. To to ape maniko. Everything we must see from the scriptures. Praise the Lord. So there was nothing special. Tell your neighbor, please. Oh, we muda yote. There was nothing special. Hallelujah. So I'm being jirani yako. I'm out there with Israel. I'm going to There was nothing special. Let it be known today. There was nothing special. Praise King Jesus. Okay. I want us to deal with casting out of demons very fast, and then we shall stop from there in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 17. These signs will follow those who, in my name, they will cast out, they will speak in tongues. Sasa sikia, nana kona idi yaki hapa, idi. Kona idi yako hata kazi, amu kona idi yako ya, ya, yako tu ya, ya kuzaliwa, kona ya. Hallelujah. Iyo idi yako, praise the Lord, ikona, ikona features that you can ikuwa ni genuine ni yako na siya mtu mkine. Hata kama mwenezaleo twins. Sinipuwa hini? Na hiyo ni nakuwa identify wewe ni mkenya original. So, when it comes to a believer, a believer pia kuna ID. Na kwa hiyo ID, kuna ID number. Na wano, na hiyo ID number, inakuwanga na 8 numbers. <laughs> Na ina kuanga na nasikine cha yako, sikuna kwa sikine cha yako kwa hindi. Na ikuwanda na fingerprint, sitio? Hizo ni masigns zote za kuonyesha ya kitu ni yako na wei ni jenu ni wei ni mkenya, wei wa wakuingia kenya illegally. Hallelujah. So, one of the, hizo ideas ni kwamba, you will cast out demons. Are you getting it? Hiyo iweke pale. So, a believer, any believer, atika pepo, ukipita mbele ya pepo, nasikia kama inuka, quickly in Jesus name, kama ondo. Quickly, Jesus name. See, see, I'm afraid. Sunday, we saw. To get back on board, they celebrated. Oh, the demons! The demons obeyed, and they were rejoicing. Jesus told them, "No, you are mistaken. That is just an idea. one of the things to prove, to show that you are believers. But that cannot be the reason for your joy. Rejoice because your names are where. That is the basis of our joy." Like here, the Kapebo, so we talk Kapebo, and after that, they only seek a deliverance service. We are talking Kapebo is ignorance because na na mukiona kani sehote abayo wana tuanga Kapebo bado wana ibada kuto Kapebo in a manisha in that church there is no believers because demons cannot live in believers. Hallelujah! It is only those people who are not born again, who are demon possessed, we cast out demons, and then when we cast out demons. If they allow deliverance now to happen, salvation to end up, Jesus says, when you cast out demons, they will go. But if the place remains vacant, meaning if salvation shall not end that person, of deliverance, then the demons will come back. See, the demons will come back. And when they come back, they will go back to where they were. If they find a space, the Holy Spirit is not there. The salvation is not in that person. They will go and call seven more. So seven more plus in moja, wamekua eight. Number eight ko be ni number a new beginning. So kuna kuwa ni new beginning your troubles. Because it was a casting out of demons. How many people have you seen? Amesha tumesha cast out demons swa pasai. Na kifika inji ya maanda kusengenya wami. Bara tu, ya hapa tu tumemata, kufika inji. 
I'm a rude coach. Because we cast out demons, but the person was not delivered. Because deliverance is salvation. Hallelujah. Deliverance is what? Salvation. But a believer who is born again, it means in him, in her, the Holy Spirit is full. And so the, the, the enemy, the, the, the demon, cannot enter that person. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you need to understand, there is casting out of demons, there is deliverance. Deliverance is a shift. But if we shall cast out demons, after casting out demons, now we preach a salvation to this man. And then when he accepts Jesus Christ, he is delivered. Because now Christ has entered and the devil cannot be where Satan is. Who shall bring charge to those who are in Christ Jesus? Hallelujah. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Not even demons. Are we together with somebody? That is what we, the church ought to understand. So, why let a pussy a man of Sema to a little mamma or a Kennedy Combodel? It is stupid, stupidity in obscenity, in hokamity, in the next one you want to say. Hallelujah. And all obnoxious way of thinking. Praise King Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Quickly. Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 19. The 70 returned with joy, uh -huh. saying, mm -hmm. Lord, even the demons are subject to you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should explain this. Uh, 9, Rudy 9, verse 42. You don't explain. Rudy chapter 9, verse 42. Look. While he was coming, while he was coming, the demon tore him and convulsed, mm -hmm. convulsed him. Mm -hmm. But Jesus rebuked the So somebody is coming, Jesus is coming, and and then the demon, by seeing Jesus, it begins to disturb this man, and then the man began to convulse. Convulse the fame. Could lose near a new man. Because people in Yangaika. Hallelujah. And then Jesus. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. And Jesus rebuked uh -huh. the unclean spirit uh -huh. and healed the boy. And healed the boy. Uh -huh. And gave him back to his father. And that was not deliverance. So it shows you that Jesus also cast out demons. He rebuked. The word rebuke is casting out. He expelled the demon from this boy and then he returned the boy to the parents. Hallelujah. Praise King Jesus. Amen. Casting out of demons. So when you cast out demons, don't say you are so powerful. That's why Jesus says this. others will say, we cast demons in your name. And he'll say, go, I don't know you. Because that is not a big deal. That is not a big deal. When you see a church in a service was powerful. It was not powerful. We were in a, an executive meeting with the enemy. And the enemy was our friend. It's only that we call him enemy. But because we are on his side, we never knew. How many are you? We are 40. Ah, we 42. Uh, you are 42, yes. What are you doing here? Ah, we are 74. A liar cannot tell you the truth. And Jesus calls him the father of lies. And his mother tongue is? What is your mother tongue? Satan's mother tongue is? Lies. If you want to know his native language, okay, we listen to what is your mother tongue? He tells you, my mother tongue is Luya, or my mother tongue is Kikuyu, or my mother tongue. Now, Satan, what is your mother tongue? <laughs> Lies, deception. Are we together? So, casting out of demons, even Jesus did it, and he says, and this will be the sign. That is just a sign. It, it, it does not. It, does, it is not deliverance. Matthew 8, 16. We must read three more books, two more books after this one. Then we will care for another for today. That evening, they brought to him many who were possessed with demons, mm -hmm. and he cast out the spirits with a word mm -hmm. and healed all who were sick. And healed all who were sick. He cast out all the... Are you seeing the word? I would have put a man for four days on the people who He delivered them. He cast 
out demons. Being born again means I have been moved from the bondage of darkness, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. In the kingdom of light, there is no demon possession. Are you, are you getting it? There is no demon possession. It, that's why salvation is called safety. I'm now safe. Where I am here, the little I'm delivered, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm secure because I'm rescued already. So nothing like a devil can feed me. Are we learning? Praise the Lord. Casting. To cast out means to expel. To expel. Hallelujah. Acts 16, verse 16 to 19. Quickly. Acts 16, verse 16 to 19. And then we finish with Luke. Acts 16, verse 16 to 19. As, as we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination. <laughs> and, and brought her owners much gain by soothing by soothsaying. By soothsaying. She followed Paul and And she was a in fact, eh? She followed Paul and us, crying. Yeah. These men are servants of the Most High God. You see, she's even she's even praising them. Hallelujah. Mama wana tuaga kwa tiri ma pepe na wasifu. Lakini wapa tuki kujia ba uwa na kwanza ba. Mmeski yawa na pepe microphone. Mmeski na sema hapa kwa poso. Dok na kwanza ba. Mmeski ya. Listen to this. You in the pepe la divination who prophesy ya wongo. Nime muto na mkana tu. Nime ota ni kwa Jesus. Nime kwa Jesus. Wacha uchawi. Hallelujah. Ah, wacha uchawi. Hallelujah. Na mula kuja kuambia mekuwata mambie hindi wacha uchawi. Praise the Lord. Because, hakuna mtu wajirata kwa bibiria agenda kambio mwenye ame muwata hivi. Habana. Muwataja likuwa natakuta wa kumuindepretia. How can you dream a dream and interpret the dream yourself? Even Joseph who was interpreting dreams, when he dreamt, he sought for the interpretation. Daniel, he interpreted the dreams, but when he dreamt, he asked God, what does this mean? I don't understand. Hallelujah. Why is it that you dream and interpret yourself? <laughs> Shall we? Keep reading. These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul was annoyed and turned and said to the Spirit, I charge you in the name of Jesus. I charge you in the name of Jesus. We charge demons. We, we, we condemn them. Uh -huh. I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. To come out and of it her. came out that and very And it out. came out immediately. There was no discussion. Have you had discussion? <laughs> the, the devil had such a discussion. You know, these are men of God. They are powerful. You know, hey. What you got you again was crazy. Do you come to the visit? Let a mic. Now, will you join me powerful? Will you join me in powerful? But listen here. It disappointed Paul that a demon wants to speak in his presence. Hallelujah. A demon wants to speak. A demon will not speak in our presence. If we are in Christ Jesus and we are already born again, we are delivered, meaning we are saved. A demon, an evil spirit, shall not speak in our presence. When it wants to speak in our Father Ronald, you stand up and you speak to that demon. Come out in Jesus' name right now. Amen. And it leads in a person that's not known. Because you are a believer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You, 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 and understand this is an evil spirit trying to draw my attention from the message. I cast you in the name of our Lord Jesus. And then it leaves. Hata kuna watu wengine kanzani wanasab devil lakini wajua na pia tuni believers. Because wanaweza soma maandiko kidogo, wanaweza omba kidogo wakitembea because we know maandiko huko. Lakini ukitaka kujua ameshikwa na kapepo, unaona preaching kwa dakika tano ameenda nje mara tatu na simu. Sumbo watu kutembe tembe drawing attention of people. And you are a leader. You are a pastor. You are a bishop. Like time. But you know to sumbo kutembe tu. Iyo kutembe tu yo. Inaonyesha kuna kamutu ndani. Kuna kamutu ndani. 
Now you are not expecting a visitor. Labda na kwa kwa ni kwa kwa dada labda ndoa del monde. Zao kuna mjeni na ngoja because we ni bali na huko. Let us finish the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 17. I don't know if we shall read the whole of it, but Luke chapter 11 verse 17 to 36. Luke 11. But he knowing their thoughts said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid west, and a divided household fall. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? How will his kingdom stand? So they, they said he was uh, casting out demons by the power of the Zelba. Uh -huh. So he's angering them. Uh -huh. For you say that I, ca I cast out demons by Belzebul. Belzebul. Mm -hmm. And if I cast out demons by Belzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Mm -hmm. Therefore they shall be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God mm -hmm. that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come has upon come. you. Then the kingdom of God, of, of God has come upon you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So he, he uses the word ka casting. Malpopote mapepo ya litoka ndani ya mtu. The word is rebuking or casting or expulsion, okay. not deliverance. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Casting. So Jesus cast out demons. And he says, even for you believers, you will cast out demons. But that is not deliverance. When it comes to deliverance, he says, I am the only one to deliver. Psalms, we have read. We have read Isaiah 43 verse 11. He says, I am the Lord. I am the only deliverer. No man else can deliver. So what does a pastor do pertaining deliverance or salvation? He preaches and then they respond and the deliverer delivers when they confess and believe. Confessing Jesus. Amen. That is salvation. Hallelujah. So we shall we shall also continue from there in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I just speak a part of us because of time in Jesus' mighty name. We shall be here tomorrow because this is a very wonderful topic. And the more we read and the more we learn, the more shall we be able to help others and quit from ignorance and start to live in the life of Christ in Jesus' name. Shalom, God bless you so much. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, because you have explained yourself to us more that we may understand you. And Lord, we understand as we rejoice that in you, Lord, we are delivered because you are our deliverer. You are the one who, are, who has ransomed us by your very own price. Thank you, Lord, for we are delivered. And Lord, you have empowered us to cast out demons. So it is not for us to deliver, but it is for us to cast out demons. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we thank you and pray. Amen. God bless you. Shalom. Those who are watching us, keep on watching, subscribe, get to here, Christ Church, and we shall learn more in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom. God bless you.